بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين I'm gonna try my best this is gonna be crazy الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم uh, it's gonna have too much echo بسم الله اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله we ask you for your love we ask you for the actions that will gain your love and we ask you for the love of those people that you love um, I'm gonna try my best to do this tonight and y'all gonna try your best to put up with my voice tonight <laughs> Shaitan does not want us having this halakha <laughs> and my wife was like yo you're sick Da, 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 whatever, and I'm like, nah, yo, that's shaitan right now. <laughs> no, no, we gotta push through tonight. We gotta push through. So, um, um, so excuse my voice, inshallah. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a beautiful topic that we're beginning for the next coming weeks. And um, my late, the theme lately for me has been to talk about things that aren't being talked about enough. I'm gonna say that again. I want to talk about the things that aren't being talked about enough. So the journey was because we don't talk about Jahannam anymore. We don't talk about the Day of Judgment anymore. We don't talk about Jannah no more. We don't talk about that stuff, so we need to talk about it again. And the theme that we're doing now, Know Thy Enemy, is all about shaitan and understanding the deceptions, the whispers, the methodologies that shaitan uses to keep us off track. And the reason I want to talk about it is because we don't talk about it anymore. And as we all got hyped up with that journey back home, what we don't realize is that on that journey, there are enemies and there are things trying to stop us from being successful on that journey. And I wanted to preface this with a very beautiful moment from the Prophet's life. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the early days of Mecca. Only a few people are Muslim, like 20 or 30, maybe 40. Islam is low key. People are hearing about it, but it's never been made public. Then the Prophet ﷺ, you guys know this story, but now it's going to hit different. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he ascends this, this Jabal al-Qubais. He goes up on this mountain and he starts to yell, Ya Sabaha, Ya Sabaha, which is the call for war. Like if it's about to go down and we're about to get attacked, that's what you call out. Hey, yo, whatever. Let everybody know it's about to go down. The prophet, he goes up on this mountain and he yells, Ya Sabaha, Ya Sabaha. So everybody shows up. Everybody. The hadith says even those who couldn't show, they sent somebody to show up. And they're all at the bottom of the mountain. Y'all can hear me, right? They're all at the bottom of the mountain. And the Prophet Sallallahu sees them all gathered. And he says, if I was going to tell you that there was an enemy on the other side of this mountain, would you believe me? And they said, surely we would believe you. We've never heard of you lying in our whole life that we know you. You've never lied. No matter what you do, we trust you. <clears throat> the Prophet Sallallahu was at a vantage point. I want you to picture this. He's at the top of a mountain in front of you. Picture it. He's there. And from there, he can see what you can't see on the other side. So in that moment, he goes, look, I'm in a position where I can see stuff y'all don't see. And if I, being truthful, and you know me to be truthful, if I, being the truthful one, tells you that there's something over there that's about to attack you, would you not listen to me? Would you not start getting ready? Would you not prepare for war? And they're like, for sure, because you can see what we don't see. I wanted to start with that, because when you read the Quran and what it says about shaitan, it's low key, like he's out for our souls. And we make it light, we make it whatever, you know, we joke about, even our culture jokes about shayateen, it's not a really big thing. But the way the Quran prefaces it, the way the Quran frames this whole thing is like, yo, wake up. There is something that truly hates your existence 
and wants to prove to Allah that you won't be grateful, that you won't obey him, that you will end up in hell with him. And so he's going to do everything possible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the means for this battle, for this war. But here's the deal. It's all good because the Quran is like, look, not only did I tell you there's a path you got to go on, but I'm also telling you the enemy's on the path, but then I'm also going to give you the, the, the way around. I'm also going to give you the tools so you can fight that enemy. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Prophet Sallallahu teaching us that shaitan is our enemy and he is at war with our souls. And it really wakes you up to a whole nother level of wokeness when you start walking around like, like, like peeping his game. You, you feel me? It's like when you start to walk around aware of shaitan and not to obsess on it, but just to, as I say, the best phrase, peep game. Like just to be aware. Like I already know how you're coming at me. That's what I hope to give you through this, through this, uh, through, through this series, this awareness. The Quran says clearly, لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا He is your enemy, so treat him like an enemy. I read one scholar, he said, don't go in public and act like he's your enemy and be best friends with him when you're at home. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, Shaitan, he's horrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Low-key, y'all texting each other. <laughs> Low-key, the moment you walk in the house, you're like, yo, where you been? He's like, don't, don't openly hate Shaitan and then secretly be his boy or be his sister, whatever. So treat this real. Realize that this, this, this being, and we're going to talk about the whole thing. I'm just getting us ready for what's going down. Realize that this is literally war. The Quran says, check this verse out. Surah Isra, verse number 64. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَفْزِسْ مَنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِسَوْتِكْ Oh, oh, Iblis, mislead any of them you want with your voice. وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ And use your horses against them. And use your soldiers against them as well. Like, I'm telling you, the way the Prophet talked about this is not a light matter. It's like, take this serious. Now, again, it's about knowing the mechanisms, knowing what he does so that you're on point and so you're on game and you don't fall susceptible to those things. So this whole thing is about awareness. It's about knowing what he does, and it's about being aware of those things. Um, and so the next thing I want to highlight is that you won't be able to do any righteousness unless you understand how shaitan tries to get in the way. Let me say that again. You won't be able to do any good deeds of righteousness. And there's a hadith narrated by Imam Nasa'i I wanted to share with you. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, listen to this hadith, it's heavy. Sabra bin Abi Fakiha, he says, Samiatu Rasul Sai Salem Yakul, in the Shaytan, Kaadali ibn Adam bi atrukihi. Now listen to this. The Prophet Sai Salem, he says, Shaytan, he sits in the pathways of each and every one of us. Now, what does that mean? If you look in Surah, uh, Surah A'raf, when Shaytan is, is banished and and, 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 and kicked out of the presence of Allah. By the way, that's what shaitan means. When we say the word shaitan, I'm going to break this down. When we talk about shaitan, I need you to think of three different things. Y'all with me? Number one is, for lack of better terms, shaitan with the big S. All right? Like the big shaitan. Now this is Iblis. This is the shaitan. Just like Adam is our father, Right? Shaitan, Iblis, that's the big S. He's the head. He, he's the one that started this whole war. And y'all know the story. The story is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm creating this creation. Iblis before this was the highest of the jinn. Jinn existed before us. He was the most righteous of the jinn. The Prophet said there's not a place on this earth except he did sajda to Allah. He was righteous. He reached ranks. He was up there. How high up? He was like, well, you could chill with the angels now. Some say he was even in charge, in charge of angels. But at that moment, that's when the test came. Allah created Adam, and without any soul, he put him on display 
like a mannequin. Like that's what I'm about to create. And this is the thing I'm about to give honor to, me and you. But right there, the hate came. The, the, the thought came that how can I lose my position? How can something be honored above me? Soul was blown into Adam. I'm paraphrasing because I think a lot of us know this. But I want you to see where the, where the animosity stems from. Where does it come from? So at that, we could just read it from Surah Araf. Fasajadu illa Iblis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, everyone bow down to this creation. Iblis, he goes, nah, I'm good. Lam yakun mina sajideen. I'm not bowing down. I got a position. This thing right here doesn't deserve my position. I don't understand it. I'm not going with it. Allah says, what stopped you? Why didn't you obey me? He goes, I'm better than him, yo. I'm better than him. Come from a better family, better background. I'm better. You made me from fire. This dude is just from dirt. Fire is, 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 is it elevates, right? It's, you know what I mean? It's better. He's, Allah says, no, you have to leave now. You, this place we're in, no arrogance is allowed here. When Allah kicked them out, he said, hold up, before I leave. This is crazy. Shaytan tries to use this trick against us. This whole class is about tricks of shaytan. Shaytan tries to tell you trick number one for your playbook. Yo, y'all better write these down. You know what I mean? Because you're going to have to flip through these every now and then. Trick number one, you've been sinning a lot. You're not on your game. You want to make dua. What does he say? Oh, how could you make dua? You, you've been sinning so much. You think Allah's going to listen to you? After all the disobedience you've been doing? As much sin you've been doing? Bro, shaitan's like, I know what you was watching. You think Allah's going to listen to you? <laughs> but look what he himself did. The moment he was kicked out, he made dua. He said, Rabbi anvirni ila yawmi yuba'athun. He's like, I'm leaving, right? Oh Allah, give me respite to the day of judgment. Don't take me anywhere now. Let me have life until the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all right, I accept your dua. So the same one telling you, the same one telling you that you're not righteous enough, pious enough to make dua is the same one that made dua right after his disobedience. Peep game. <laughs> Notice the trick. So no matter where you are in your life, always make dua. Then what does he say next? Another tactic, another, another problem with shaitan. He goes, oh Allah, because you messed me up. Number one problem with shaitan, he can't take responsibility for his own problems. How many of us being here blaming people? Dad, it's your fault. I didn't get into that school. Mom, it's your fault. You were never here. When will we take ownership, right? For our lives. He said, You did this to me. So what does he say? Because you misguided me, I'm sitting on this pathway. You know what Imam Razi says? He says, when you sit down, that means I'm not moving. I'm sitting down on this pathway, and I will stand on the pathway that's mustaqim. Here's the deal. That means he knows what the right path is. So that means as you try to walk on the right path, He's right there, because he already knows what the right path is. Siratak al-mustaqim. Thumma la'atiyannahum. I'm going to come from in front, from behind, from the right, from the left. And guess what, Allah? You'll realize that most of, the, most of these Bani Adam won't be grateful to you. Here's the deal. Shaitan wants to prove that you will not be grateful to Allah for the blessings he's given you. I'm going to say that again. Shaitan wants to prove to Allah. Allah tells us in hindsight, as many people are going to Jahannam, He tells us in hindsight that Iblis will see, say, I told you so, look how many are with me. Are you with me? He says, I told you, look how many are following me right now. So what does He say? He says, I'm going to come from the front, I'm going to come from the back, I'm going to come from right, from the left, I'm going to come from every direction. And what you will notice is that they will not be grateful to you. The animosity that he has for me and you, 
begins from this moment that he lost his position because of the creation of our father. So that first shaitan, that first, what does shaitan mean? It means to be pushed away. The first one pushed away from God was pushed away because of his arrogance and because of the position that God gave you. But it doesn't stop there. When we say shayateen, we're referring to all of the jinn that follow after him. But guess what, y'all? Shayateen al-insi wal jinni. Now here's what we don't realize, is that many of the shayateen come in the form of human beings. So everything I'm talking about right now, I need us to understand that the Quran, listen to this narration. This narration is, is, is wild. Abu Dhar radiallahu an, he says, I'm going to get back to that first narration in a minute. Abu Dhar says, Ataytu Rasulullah. One day I went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Majlis. He goes, I go to the Prophet in the masjid and he's sitting down. He goes, Qad atala fihi julus. The Prophet, he was sitting and he was sitting for a very long time. He was just, subhanAllah, he was so comfortable with himself that he could just sit still by himself. So Abu Dhar says, I walk in the masjid, I see the Prophet sitting, so I just sit next to him. He sat for a long time. Finally, the Prophet looks up at me, he goes, Yo, Abu Dhar, has salata? Did you pray yet? No, I didn't pray yet. The Prophet says to Abu Dhar, Yo, stand up, go pray two raka'ah real quick. I went and prayed and I came and I sat back with him. He goes, yo, Abu Dhar. See, that two rakat was just to wake him up. Like, yo, I'm about to drop something deep on you. I'm about to drop something heavy on you. So it's like, yo, go, go pray real quick. He prayed. I, yeah, what's up? It's like it brings that attention, like something big. He goes, He's like, did you ask Allah to protect you from the shayateen? that are humans and the shayateen that are jinn? Abu Dhar says, Ya Rasulullah, وَهَلِّ الْإِنسَانِ مِنَ shayateen? Are there human beings that are shayateen? The Prophet Sallallahu he says, Naam, هُمْ شَرٌ مِنْ شَيَاتِينَ الْجِنْ He says, yeah, yeah, they're worse than the ones that are jinns. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This knowledge that we're learning in this series is, is going to, all right, yo, I got to get back to the old one. We was like 20 of us, yo. I used to drop gems. And I was so many people, y'all be judging people and stuff, man. <laughs> yo, back in the day, before I became somewhat of a better person by accepting Islam, I was a very bad person, okay? But that phase, I'm talking 17, 18, 19, 20, right? No, 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 I became Muslim at 18, okay. So 16, 17, 18, really, really bad time in my life. But almost, like horrible, guys, I was a bad person, okay. But almost everything I did, I know it was because of this one shaitan that was my best friend. And in hindsight, low-key, pure shaitan. No. <laughs> I ain't even front, no. Like every time his mouth opened, it was something evil. Let's do something. Every time. And the reason I say that is because I don't want you to take this information and judge people at all. Never do that. But you need to be aware when sometimes shaitan is using somebody to get to you. You feel me? It's not that this person is a shaitan, whatever, but you need to know the, the trick. So someone, be, they talk to you on the phone, and they're like, yo, you need to da-da-da-da-da. And you kind of like, all right, cool. Because you, peep, you, you realize, I already know that's what shaitan says. Now, you're not shaitan, but he's using you right now. So, cool, I'm going to holler at you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. And you know what it helps us too? Low-key, sometimes we're the one giving that bad advice too. So when you listen to these, you could check yourself as well. So when we talk about shayateen, I want us to understand that Iblis is the first shaytan. He's the first one kicked out of the presence of Allah. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, Iblis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, in, Talking about people who follow shaytan, he says, 
Are you going to take him and his children as your partners? So here, let's break this down. What does this mean? What this means is the Quran is telling us that shaitan is not alone. That topic of like one shaitan, it's not one shaitan. It's a family of shayateen. It's a family. Some say it's actual families. Like so there was this one scholar, his name was Imam Sha'bi. Really, really famous scholar, like huge, okay? Huh? Oh, uh, can, where are they going to move to, bro? Can y'all kind of move up a little bit, inshallah? We working on fixing the whole setup so everybody can fit more comfortably, inshallah. So, uh, inshallah. Especially the brothers, man. The brothers be out in the room. Allah accept. So when we talk about shaitan, I want us to understand that that we're not talking about one. Oh, y'all can move over slightly if you want. They just moved that over a little bit. Jazakallah khair. The verse in, the, the verse in Surah Al-Kahf. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ تِشْجُدُ لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَنْ أَمْنِ رَبِّ Allah asks a question. Are you going to take Iblis and his children? So what this tells us, some of the Mufassirin, they say, no, straight up. Iblis has children the same way Adam had children, Iblis has children. And those children are shayateen that we deal with till, till today, they're progeny. We deal with them till today. In fact, I, I read one narration, and I'll, I'll go through it, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting, where, where, where Mujahid, who's a leading scholar from the time of the Sahaba, he talks about the names of the children of Iblis. But before we go into that, the question is, are you going to take him and his progeny as your, as your followers, are you going to follow after them? The point we need to understand is we're not dealing with that Iblis. We're dealing with the progeny, the family, or the followers. So some scholars say, no, Iblis don't have no kids. There was one scholar I was about to say before he asked me to move. There's one scholar, his name was Imam Sha'bi. Right? I just saw this in uh, Imam Razi's tafsir. Imam Sha'bi, somebody, you know, people be asking silly questions. Uh, so somebody asked him a question. They're like, yo, what's Shaitan's wife's name? Now, before I go further, check this. Imam Ghazali, he says this. He's like, if you're worried about how Shaitan gets inside, um, how, what's his wife's name, what are his children's name, how does all that work? He's like, you know what? I'm going to give you an example. He's like, imagine a person who a snake has slithered into their shirt. And all of a sudden, they start asking, hey, do you know what color the snake was? Do you, know how, do you know how big the snake is? Did you see the color? What was the, what was the details on the snake? He's like, you're a fool. The purpose, at that point, you should be focusing on not getting bit. So he's like, when we're talking about shaitan, and y'all asking like, oh, well, you know, does he have a wife? What's his first child's name? Okay, how does he actually get into our blood? Imam Ghazali's like, you're missing the point of the knowledge that the Prophet taught us, and this is ilm la yanfa. It's knowledge that doesn't even benefit you. Benefit you. So I'll finish off the thing. Imam Sha'bi, he was known to be really funny, actually. Imam Sha'bi, someone asked him, he goes, uh, what, was his, uh, what was his wife's name? Man, Imam Sha'bi was quick, because I would have been sitting here like, I don't know. Imam Sha'bi goes, they didn't invite me to the wedding, so I don't know. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's a good one. Imam Sha'bi all day, yo, that's what's up. Okay, so there's this one narration um, that talks about just briefly the children of Iblis, and I only mention this so that you can understand that the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us that every single person, I want to narrate this hadith, I want you to understand this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that every single one of us, uh, two narrations, yajiri, that shaitan runs in each of us the same way our blood flows in each of us. You got to know that hadith. You got to know that hadith, that shaitan runs through us the same way our blood runs through us. Now, why is that important? Let me tell you why. Where does all the blood go through? The heart. A lot of protecting yourself from shaitan is understanding your heart. And shaitan influencing your greed, your, your arrogance, your hasid. Now, we're not going to talk about those two later in the series, but I need us to understand that Imam Ghazali says, if you want to protect from shaitan, you got to protect your heart. Because he flows in the blood, just, flows in the veins just like the blood. 
In another narration, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Inna lil malik lamma wa lil shaytan lamma. Indeed, for every human being, there is a touch from an angel and a touch from a devil, a shaytan. Fa'amma lamma tul malik. What is, the, what is the touch of an angel? Fa'i'adun bil khair. Promises of, of goodness from Allah. Wa tasdiq bil haq. Thoughts about belief in the Prophet and, 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 and affirming what is true. Wa amma lamma tul shaytan fa'i'ad bil shar. It's when you keep thinking, oh, it's going to mess up. Oh, this is going to get wrong. Oh, none of this is true. So what are we learning? Imam Ghazali says this. If we want to break down how shaitan attacks all of us, there's two ways. And it's easy to understand. He has arrows and he has nets. Arrows and nets. What are the arrows? Thoughts. Waswas. Thoughts that come to you. We'll go through that. And what are the nets? <coughs> Plots, deception, tricks, game plan, how he plays you. And we're going to go through both of those as well. So we need to understand when we're talking about fighting against shaitan, we have to understand that shaitan doesn't stop. He doesn't quit. He doesn't give up. And he's so close. So because he's so close, because he's so near to us, we have to be woke constantly. Hassan Basri, somebody asked him, people be asking crazy questions. I just realized it's another one. Somebody asked him, does shaitan sleep? Now, he didn't answer in a funny way. He goes, if shaitan slept, we would get a break, but we don't get no break. Meaning, meaning we're grinding out here because shaitan never quits. He keeps coming at us. So I wanted to share to you, that I wanted to share with you this narration that talks about every pathway to good, shaitan being on every pathway to good. In the shaitan qa'ada li ibn Adam bit'atruqihi. Shaitan is sitting on each like pathway. So understand this. Each of us has a shaitan with us, right? But also what the Prophet taught us is there's other shayateen that are stopping us from certain actions. Like I said, is it all jinn? Not all jinn. It could be people too. You're trying to go to the masjid. You hit up such and such. They're like, oh, why are you going again? Whatever. So there are shayateen that are sitting on the pathway. Doesn't mean just spiritual. But it could also be other people. So what did the Prophet say? He said, I'm going to get through this, y'all. We're going to get through this. He said, and this is just an example. He says, Shaitan is sitting on the pathways to each person. He goes, he sits on the pathway to a person accepting Islam. And Shaitan says this, Tuslim, you're going you're gonna to become Muslim? You're going to give up your old religion? You're going to give up your family's way of life? So the, 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 the Prophet says, then the person... فأصاه, he, he ignores shaitan. He ignores him. He, he disobeys him. فأسلمه. Then, ثم قعد له بطريق الهجرة. Now it's time to migrate. So let me break this hadith down. So, in the early days of Islam, the first struggle was just to become Muslim. But then after that, you had to leave the place that you couldn't practice Islam and go to a good place. And then the struggle after that was to actually fight with the Prophet against people that were fighting against Islam. So this hadith just highlights that at each moment, when you get past one step, you best believe that at the next, around the corner, he's got another thing set up for you. So the narration says that the person becomes Muslim, and now shaitan is like, um, oh, you trying to do hijrah? Y'all know what hijrah is, right? To leave home and go to another place. He's like, you going you gonna to go home? You're going to go to somewhere strange? You're not going to have no friends there. Oh, you're going to leave your town? You're going to leave the place you know? Now you're just going to be like a lost person in some strange city. Dallas or something, right? Everybody doing hijra to Dallas, right? So if you disobey the person and you, and you, and you actually make hijra, then he says, Now he's at the, at the door of jihad. At that time, you had to help fight with the Muslims. And what does he say? Oh, you're going to fight? What if your kids? What about your wifey? What about your house? What about this? The reason I wanted to share this hadith is I wanted you to realize that the Prophet ﷺ is like, yo, if you don't know his plans, 
at every turn, there's another thing he's going to say. You just got to know how to get around it. And another narration mentions that not only is he at every path to good, but the shayateen are behind every evil. I want you to listen to this hadith. It is heavy. The narration says, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari says, إِذَا asbaha Iblisu, When Iblis, not the little shayateen, the main one, إِذَا asbaha Iblisu, when, 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 when the morning comes upon Iblis, بَثَّ جُنُودَهُ He sends out his army. Army, y'all. فَيَقُولُ مَنْ أَظَلَّ مُسْلِمًا Whoever misguides a Muslim. Because, yo, listen. A Muslim for shaitan is the worst. Because if he misguides somebody that don't know the haq, it's like, see, I proved true. But we are like, how can I admit it? How can I explain it? Every time we do sajda, he remembers what he didn't do. They say every sajda you do makes shaitan scream. Because it's like, that's what I couldn't do right there. Why are you doing that? So you are more precious to shaitan than anyone else to pull you from the track. Because you're the one who's actually doing what he couldn't do. You're the one proving to Allah that, he, that he's wrong. So it says, he says to his army, sends them out. I want you to see this. Morning comes. Shaitan sends out his army. فَيَقُولُ Whoever misguides a Muslim, today I'm going to put a, a crown on their head. أَلْبَسْتُهُ تَاجٍ I'll give you a crown. Meaning you're going to be recognized. You know, you know, like a trophy, like you're going to be recognized. You'll be whoever misguides a Muslim. Check this. They come back towards the end of the day, the shayateen. They're coming back to report what they did that day. What did they, what did they mess up in life? One of them comes. What did you do? He says, Lam azal bi fulan hal hatta talaqa zawja. He goes, I stayed on top of Abdullah until he gave his wife a divorce. I split up a family. I split up a family. Low key, before I forget, when you walk in your house, first thing you say is Bismillah, yo. Open the door, Bismillah. There is a specific shaitan that if you don't open that door, he slides into like, oh, this is my spot today. What we eating? Where's my bed? I'm dead joke. No joke. No joke. He's like, this is my spot. And then you wonder why y'all arguing so much at the house. You're like, dang, why are we always arguing? Did anybody say Bismillah when they walked up in this joint? Nobody. That's why you arguing so much. Just put that on the door so everybody sees it. Bismillah. And then send salah ala nabi. Oh, salah ala sayyidina Muhammad. That's just the low, like, that's just like, that ain't even like tricks of shaitan. That's just like, like, like sunscreen. Nah, y'all ain't even feeling me, yo. That's just like, you, that, you, who goes out of the house in Dallas without putting sunscreen? Everybody. You walk in the house, it's just like sunscreen. Like, Bismillah rahman rahim Shaitan, you ain't, you ain't up in here with me. That It's not happening today. And there's, there's a specific shaitan. The Prophet Sallallahu said, if you don't say Bismillah, he comes in right in. Like, what are we up to today? So this person, this one shaitan comes back to Iblis. What did you do? Report. What did you do today? I want you to see behind every evil what's there. So you realize this war ain't no joke. So this person goes, Lam azal bi fulan. I stayed in fulan's ear. Hatta talaqa zawja. Until he gave his wife divorce. Qala, the big shaitan goes, Ah, you shiko an yate Ah, they are gonna get remarried. The next, the next shaitan goes, hold hold up. يقول الآخر لم أزل بفلان حتى أقه. Yo, I was on Abdullah, I was on Fatima's head until she cursed at her mother. She cursed her parents. Shaitan listens, he goes, you she go on your barra. Ah, he gonna go ask her for forgiveness tomorrow. He'll be good to her tomorrow. It's good, but it ain't that big. قال ويقول القائل لم أزل بفلان حتى شرب الخمر. He's like I stayed on this one Muslim 
until they start drinking alcohol. Iblis goes, ah, uh, anta. The hadith says anta. Like you, you, yeah. That's what's up. Because the rank is going higher. Khamer will destroy a person, yo. Addiction, destroy you. Family, everything. Money, everything. So he's like, anta, anta, good. Qala wa yaqulu. Another one goes, lam azal bi fulan hatta zana. I stayed on top of such and such until they committed zina. Muslim. Qala, anta, ah, anta, good job. Qala wa yaqulu lam azal bi fulan hatta qatala. I stayed on such and such until he murdered a person. Qala, anta, anta, no, no, you're the one. You're the one. In another narration in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu says, in the Iblis yadu arshahu al ma, Shaitan sits on his throne. He wants to imitate God, right? He sits on his throne and he sends out the shayateen. These are Sahih Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, he sends out his, his army. فَأَدَنَاهُمْ minhu, The lowest one. فَأَدَنَاهُمْ The one closest, sorry. The one closest to him. مَنْزِلَةً أَعْذَمُهُ فِتْنَةً is the one that causes the most fitna in our lives. يَجِئُ أَحَدُهُمْ وَيَقُولُ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَأَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَصَنَعْتُ كَذَا I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And then, listen to this, I want you to realize every aspect of our lives, how shaitan is after us. The hadith, Sahih Muslim, authentic, strong hadith. Prophet ﷺ said what? ثُمَّ يَجِئُ أَحَدُهُمْ then there's this one little shaitan in the back trying to hide. And Iblis is like, you, what did you do today? فَيَقُولُ مَا تَرَكْتُ Who I stayed on my assignment, person. حَتَّى فَارَقَتْ فَارَقْتُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَهْلِهِ I split the family up. قَالَ فَيُدْنِيهِ Iblis brings him close. وَيَقُولُ فَالْتَزِمَهُ And he hugs him. And he says, you did the best job. You did the family life, yo. How many of us, how many of us had got drama in the house? And, and, and literally this hadith says, the source is shaitan. That's most beloved to shaitan. So my, my objective here is for us to understand these different ways that he stays on the path, who he is. So what did we say? We mentioned the big shaitan, that's Iblis. His whole army, all of the other jinn and people. Don't sleep on people. All of them. Jazakallah khair. Ahsant. All of the jinn and all of the people that are with him. Shayateen al jinni wal ins. The Quran tells us, Innahu yarakum min haythu la taronahu. Next aspect of shaitan, which we all understand. The Quran says, He sees you from where you don't see him. Which is clear. We don't see shaitan, but he sees us. Meaning the one that is our assignment, the one that's with us from the moment. The Prophet ﷺ said every single person has a shaitan. The Sahaba, they said, you too, Ya Rasulullah? He said, yes, but Allah has helped me with my shaitan. My shaitan tells me good things to do. You know what I mean? That's how you got to play these people, yo. You know what I mean? You got to get so close to that dude that now he just starts giving you good advice, yo. Crazy. Now here's the deal. What is it? We can't see shaitan. But through this class, we can study his methods. So we won't see him, but we see his actions. And that's what we'll learn. But here's the deal. The more you sin, the harder it is to peep his game. That's why the Quran says, When shaitan touches them, what do you do? Astaghfirullah. All of a sudden, you can see things clearly again. You got to seek forgiveness. Oh, Ya Allah, forgive me. Forgive me so that you can peep game, so you can see what's going on. Um, and so sins take this ability away. And, without, uh, and when we do Toba, we're able to see clearly those tricks. So with the time that remains, I actually want to break down one scheme or one set of, of, of specific tricks that shaitan uses for you not to do righteous deeds. Y'all ready? Listen, this is literally the playbook. Like, you don't know how, like, I feel like I'm like wrestling shaitan 
and he's in the corner like this. This dude right here, man. I, I feel like he's there. Like, I wish they weren't learning this. I wish they weren't learning this. So I say that just so you could value what we're talking about. So that you could value what's being said. Here we go. Check this. So Imam Ghazali says, Imam Ghazali says, whenever you want to do a righteous deed, there are seven things that shaitan will do to stop you from that righteous deed. And you got to know how to reply to each one of them. You feel me? You got to know how to reply to each one of them. Let's go through each one of them. Number one. Now remember, this is the, just the playbook for you trying to do a righteous deed. That's all this is. A playbook for you trying to do a righteous deed. Number one. You want, I'm just picking anything. You want to go to the halakha. You want to go study. You want to go learn. You want to pray. Whatever. The first thing he does is tell you that, that you don't need the action. You don't need to do it. Let me say that again. This is a big one. Oh, you good. We don't need to do that. You good. We're okay. We're okay. We don't need to go. Like, I, I, we're good. We prayed Fajr this morning. Like, you're good. He'll even tell you good stuff you did. But the, the, he has to create within you this feeling of, I don't need that righteous deed. I don't need that righteous deed. So Imam Ghazali, he says, what you have to do is you have to fight that by mentioning to him, are you ready? I don't know which deed will get me Jannah. I don't know which deed will get me Jannah. So he's going to tell you, yo, you don't need to, man, why are you trying to pray to us your nuffles? You don't even need that. You just literally sat in the halakha the whole day. What's the reply? What's the reply? I don't know which deed's going to get me Jannah. He's like, dang, this dude's smart. This sister's smart. No, okay, cool. What's the next thing? Can y'all guess the next thing? Okay, okay, okay. You need it. You need it. Just do it later. Go next week to the halakha. Pray those two rakats when you get home. Do it later. Do it later. Do it later. How you fight it, Haytham? There you go. Haytham already know. I ain't promised later. Yo, yo, that's a powerful reply. Oh, just do it later. Just do it later. Do it later. What's the reply? I don't know if I have later. You're lying to me again. You're telling me I have later. I don't know that. I don't know I got later. All right, let's go to number three. Number three. You start the action. You're like, no, I got to do this right now. Number three, what does he tell you? Do it quick. Rush through it. Rush through it. Rush through. Do it fast. Because, because now he can't stop you, but at least he can mess up the quality of it. You feel me, amen? Like, now he can't stop you, but he can stop the quality. He can stop how good it is. So how does he stop the quality? Just rush through it. Imam Ghazali, he goes, say this to him. You ready? A little bit of action done right is better than a lot of actions not done correctly. Think about that reply. Because he's trying to get, when you rush, you're trying to do more. The rushing is all about more. I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to do this. I got to do that. Uh-uh. Allah just wants a little bit from me. Don't play me with that rushing stuff. These two rakat right here, done right. Allah loves that more than me praying a whole bunch more, going here, going there, going there. Nope. Just two rakat. That's all I need from Allah. That's all Allah needs from me. Excuse me. Uh, number four. Now it gets deep. You slow down the ac action. Allahu Akbar. You like, he's like, hurry up. You're like, nope. I already know what's next. Number four. Is it number four? He says, look at everybody looking at you. Yo, you praying mad slow. Everybody, yo, everyone sees you. Isn't, isn't it nice they see you? 
Isn't it nice that they see you? He says, uh, he says, you got to reply and say, nas, afala takfini. He goes, you should say to him, why do I care if people see me? Does God see me? Shift the perspective. Shift right there in that moment. Who cares? People see me? Is God looking at me right now? And it shifts. It changes so much inside of you. What number are we on? Five. Yo, this playbook is heavy, y'all. Y'all going to be doing mad good deeds and stuff, yo. <laughs> You know what I mean? MashaAllah. Number five. You prayed. You got up. You did it slow. You didn't procrastinate. You didn't even think about the people. The next thing is he makes you feel proud. Look at what you did. You beat me. You are a, you, you're amazing. <laughs> you are so good. You go. Uh-uh. What do you say? I like that too. I would say it wasn't me, it was Allah. What, is, what does Ghazali say? He says, you have to say, yup, I was right. <laughs> Imam Ghazali, he says, al <laughs> lillahi. He goes, nah, just say the gift is from God, it's not me. So the moment, because the moment you start thinking you did something, Shaitan's like, yes. You get it? Yo, do you get, realize how detailed the playbook is? SubhanAllah. What's next? Um, number six. Um, okay. The next one is connected to the other one of people knowing about it, but it's about the future. So he goes, you did the action correctly. You, you, you were humble about it. You, you, you said it was from Allah. This is a slight trick. Number six, he goes, yeah, you did it perfectly. Maybe, maybe later on in your life, people will hear about this action you did. So, so basically, the expectation of people finding out in the future. You, let me break it down. You do an action right now, and you keep it low key. Shaitan's like, I know how I can still get him. I can still get him by him or her still desiring people to find out in the future. You feel me? So he's like, this is the sixth thing that Shaitan does. And you have to similarly say to him, same reply as number four, which is, what does it matter if people find out if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it? And lastly, 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 number seven. He says, he will tell you, you are very good. You don't need the action. You have made it. So look, so look, check it. Just because you did something good today, Tomorrow, you should continue that righteousness. You feel me? But what he's going to say is, look, you passed all these levels. You don't even need to keep going. You don't even need to keep going. And at that point, let me look at the reply. He says, uh, at this point, you will say to him, Innama. <laughs> you will say to him, I'm a servant. I'm doing what a servant does. I don't care if I need it or not. I'm serving God. I'm just doing what God has ordered me to do. These are seven different things. That's a heavy one, y'all. You don't get it. Let me break that one down because I didn't hear the mmm, right? Like, <laughs> let me break it down. Okay. <laughs> right? So, look. T -t Today, I do a righteous action. That, that should carry over to tomorrow, too. Like, because the, the, the need of it. Like, like, okay, check it. I'll give you a good example. Working out. You go to the gym today, right? The thing pushing you is like, yo, I need to work out. But if somebody came and was like, yo, you made it. You're the whatever, the apex of, of physical fitness, right? You don't even need to come tomorrow. So this person is like, oh, I'm good. I don't need this tomorrow. I don't need to go no more. I don't need to run no more. I don't need to do anything. So Shaitan is coming to you saying, yo, you made it. You're good now. Just chill. You've reached the apex of spirituality. You feel me now? So now you got to fight that though. Because I need to he keep hitting the gym. I need to keep hitting the subha. I need to keep hitting the prayer. I need to keep fasting. And so when he tells you you made it, you say, yo, I'm a servant, man. I'm a slave of Allah. I just do what Allah tells me to do. You feel me? Beautiful, man. May Allah accept. Um,
Yeah, it's time for us to stop now, inshallah ta'ala. My voice made it through. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept. So every week, inshallah, I'm going to be going through different methods of shaitan. Today, I just wanted us to realize how real this war is. And I'm calling it a war because that's what it is. This being and these beings want your soul, quite literally. And once you all realize how real this is, you start to live life on a whole new real level. Because you're woke in the sense of spiritually woke. So may Allah forgive us for any of our shortcomings. May Allah uh, reward us for whatever good we do. May Allah allow us to be aware of the tricks of shaitan. May Allah allow us to, to, to protect ourselves and our families from the tricks of shaitan. May Allah allow us to take seriously what he said. Treat him like an enemy. May Allah give us the ability to truly learn these methods and protect ourselves from these things, inshallah. Um, that's it for today, inshallah. May Allah accept all of us, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair, inshallah. I'll see you guys next Wednesday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. It's a, Isha is at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, right? Oh, 8. Isha is at 8.15. 15. 8.15.